You had to leave the tunnel because the rails were getting worse and worse, and the amount of tunnels that were collapsed or in danger of collapsing increased the closer you got to the Grey Range in the Parish Land. You have to travel the rest of the way to the Fifthlings Overground, which is notably over a lot of the area that we... No, not, not the same area we were at the beginning. The last place ended at Allendur, so that's as far north as we've been before, so... This little middle range right here with this little road here that these three towns are on is sort of the boundary that that uh, is not in either of the playable maps, I believe. Well, let's go on a trip. Rudeka is, contrary to what the name suggests, a large city. If Rodario is to be believed, more than 70,000 people live here, a number that you find it hard to even imagine. But while you walk through the streets, you don't doubt that it's the truth. Never before have you seen such huge masses of people. If we are looking for somewhere to quench our thirst or for a roof over our heads, then I would recommend the Golden Well Tavern. And we can find everything we need for the rest of our journey at the Big Market. Just say where you want to go, Tangdil, and I'll show you the way. You follow Rodario through the lively streets until he reaches a run-down two-story building. You hope that this dump isn't the tavern that Rodario recommends. You prepare yourself for the worst, but the inside of the tavern surprises you all. The walls are clad with dark, finely ornamented wood. The floor is clean, the tables are weighed down with good food, and a hot fire is burning in the fireplace. One should never judge a book by its cover. The guests look you over full of curiosity, and many nod a greeting. The haggard woman behind the bar greets you loudly. Rodario, you old rogue! What are you doing here? And you've got dwarves with you! <laughs> I don't see one my whole life and then several come along in the same month! We are on an important mission, Madame Flory, and could do with a place to stay the night. Rodario introduces you and negotiates a good price for a few beds and a night's lodgings. Sorry for asking, but you said you'd seen some other dwarves recently. You're thinking of Gandagar's group and wonder whether they might have reached the Kingdom of the Fifthlings already. Yes, a nice bloke from the West. Paid for his room for a month in advance and then disappeared. Travelling lights. The landlady's expression darkens. That was three weeks ago. If he doesn't come back soon, I'll have to release the room. Oh, you can sneak into the room. So it's a dwarf's room, not the other group, unless somehow one of them got off on their own. Gotta be curious, right? Although sneaking is not our forte. You give Namora a sign and sneak onto the first floor. The half-alf appears moments later. To your surprise, she has Balandis with her, who must have caught something of what was said. I want to know who the dwarf who is sneaking around here is. Perhaps he belongs to Gandagar's group. After apologizing to various guests for intruding, you are left with just one untried door. Namora picks the lock, and you enter the room unseen. The room is bigger than all the rooms in the tavern you have seen so far, and all just for one guest. There are maps, various pieces of notepaper, and three notebooks on the table. That's quite an intrusion. They checked in on every single individual room along the way. The notes are partly written in Dwarvish, and partly in the language of humans. The three of you scan through them, until Balandis draws your attention to a map, on which the route from the Kingdom of the Firstlings to the Kingdom of the Fifthlings is marked. What would make a Firstling travel to the Perished Land, or even to the Kingdom of the Fifthlings? You believe you've found an explanation. Here, this letter. I have found a way, but I don't know if I will return safely with Star Slasher. That's why I leave to you, dear Barris, my notes, may you, and, and so on. Star Slasher? You have come across this name in the notes a few times already, but you just shrug your shoulders and throw the letter back onto the table in disappointment. You had hoped to have found out some news on the whereabouts of the other group. Uh, a sword. Apparently it was given to Gizelbert I and I by a caravan travelling from the other lands. It seems we're dealing with a treasure hunter. The big market at the city's south gate certainly lives up to its name. 
you have never seen a market on such a scale. Stands, large and small, as far as the eye can see. Everything you could possibly need can be found here, as well as plenty of things that seem to have no use at all. While you push your way through the crowd to get to the trader Rodario wants to introduce to you, you overhear two peasants talking about elves. No, I tell you, it was elves. Pale skin, pointy ears. Yeah, something strange is going on these days. Old Trunderwood from down Acre Hill Way said he saw some pointy ears too. Come to think of it, where's he been all week? Here we are. Rodario's sudden announcement draws your attention away from the locals to the tent that you're now standing in front of. Welcome to Brand's Potpourri. Whatever your heart may desire, I can supply. Hey, a chance for supplies, which is probably good because we don't have that many. And they're cheap, generally. And we've got a bigger crew than ever before, so we got to be worried about that kind of thing. Oops. Uh, better Talisman of Healing. 10% chance to heal 20% of your health instead of 10. Which is also an improvement, but still... I'm not a fan of this item at all. Uh, maybe if it was constantly active, because you take damage constantly in this game, and uh, getting such a small chance of healing yourself, 1 in 10, is kind of garbage considering how short the duration of the actual talisman tends to be. It doesn't seem to stay active for particularly long at all, and then it only has a 10% chance of healing you at all, and so... I think, I've I think I've had multiple occasions now where I've activated it and the dwarf just never triggers it. And I'm like, well, why did I activate it? It's so unreliable as a healing source. And then other times it could activate over and over again. So it's not the best chance of going. Um, increase the damage of special attacks by 60%. Now that's not too bad. But it's, very, they're all, it's also wildly expensive, of course. Right, I should check in on the things I can sell. Those are my ivory figures. Those are valuable and meant to be sold. Increases the damage of auto attacks by 100%. That's something I can equip. There's the books that we've been holding on to. Talisman of Protection, obviously. Extraction 0.5 every 5 seconds during battle. That's a nice one. I like the one that gives you uh, extra points. Ooh, gives an extra action point every 2 seconds during battle. Throw that onto the character that... Yeah, throw, throw that onto our Berserker character. I'll grab that one. I like that one. It says one times. Oh, I briefly thought maybe I could get more of them. Yes, I would like to have that one in, in particular. I think that's all we have left to do there. Hey, best buddy. What do you have equipped right now? Do you even have something equipped right now? Did I take it off? Either way, let's put this one on. An extra action point to every two seconds during battle. That's good news. What are you using right now? Nothing? That, let's see. Increased damage of auto attacks. There's a few options around here. It's kind of hard to pick. But I think I kind of want to put the defense thing back on him. He does have this one, though. His damage is reduced for a half but the problem is I have to, uh... The problem is I have to actually equip that as one of my skills and lose one of my other skills, which, which is kind of a bummer. But maybe, no, maybe worthwhile considering how much damage is often incoming and how vulnerable he seems to be. And it only has a three second cooldown in its own right, so that'd be redundant to give him that. So maybe just give him Talisman of Initiative instead? I'm thinking I might take off Cleave and replace it with Defense Bonus instead of Blacksmith's uh, Blow. Definitely disappointed I can't equip more of these at once. But like, a defensive thing seems necessary because characters seem to die so quickly. The Leap Attack is good for moving around because objectives are often hard to get to when your characters just will, will, will not go through the Orcs. And of course I need an attack. So it's hard. To, it's a little hard to go for, for Leader's Will at that point. Oh well. So those are clearly... There's two question marks here to check out. Three towns. And... Yeah, it looks like to the east and west there isn't much of notes on the landscape. 
You are woken with a jolt in the middle of the night by a blood-curdling scream. You look around in panic and see that the others have been woken too, but only Geralda has beads of sweat on her brow. She's breathing heavily. Concerned, you go over to her. I can remember. The Alpha. They are doing experiments on the children of the Smith. We have to save them. By Vrakus, if the Alpha are experimenting on dwarves, we can't just ignore it. We have to free the prisoners. We can't save the world if we ignore the suffering right in front of our eyes. We will help Geralda. Boandal and the others accept your decision. Geralda nods at you gratefully. Okay, where? Where's that happening? Alpha experiments? According to Geralda, there are alpha experimentation going on door somewhere nearby. Great. Okay. She thinks she's the result of the experiments, even though the creation of the keen fire is priority, can't stand the thought of not helping dwarves in need. I guess we'll check the local question marks in towns and see if those any of those are the, are the, the thing. Nothing yet. Nope. When you reach Acre Hill, there isn't a single villager in sight. An uneasy feeling creeps over you, which finally turns into certainty when you see red paintings on the walls of the houses. Alpha. The pictures painted in blood tell the horrifying story of how the Alpha came to the village and killed the inhabitants. You also find a few elaborately carved bones, some larger ones, like those of humans, some smaller and stronger, like those of dwarves. When you reach the other end of the village, disgust is written in the faces of your companions. None of you says a word. As expected, you don't find any survivors. But there are also no undead. The perished land has not yet advanced this far. You discover some footprints on the northern edge of the village. It was orcs. Looks as though they waited here while the point ears wreaked havoc in the village. It seems like they moved on towards the north. You gather all the bones you can find together and burn them. You wash over the paintings with water from the well. You weren't able to prevent this gruesome incident, but you don't want to leave a single trace of it behind. So it's happened again, just like we saw right down here at Alduin. I mean, Alan Dewar. There it is. Alduin's from something else. What is Alduin from? Is that from this game or something else? I've got so many similar names bouncing around in my head right now. It really seals the deal on how similar a lot of, uh, fantasy storytelling tends to be when you start mixing all the words together because they all kind of fill similar slots sometimes. You walk through the villages that once blossomed but are now deserted due to the advance of the parish land. The colour has drained away from the wood of many of the houses just as it has from the countryside itself. A carpet of withered plants rustles and crackles under your feet. You don't know if the perished land can ever be driven away again, and even if it can, it is questionable whether people will ever live here again. You sigh, and try to drive these dark thoughts away from your mind. I mean, there was a village right there with fresh blood and everything, so... Where's the boundary of the perished land exactly? I don't really see a line anywhere just denoting it, so... Was that right? Was Lay Hill not in the Parish Land? It's only a day's journey away, and everyone was dead. But they were presumably just recently there. I presume the so when the Parish Land was first established, I thought it was the, that the Parish Land was like a specific region of the world. But the more and more I hear about it, I think it might resemble something a little bit more like Zerg creep, where like it's a curse or something that's slowly spreading more and more and taking over territory. It's hard to tell for sure. It seems like the Parish Land would, is something that if you read the book would be explained in- Whoa, look at the whole screen turn red. It seems like the kind of thing that the screen- that the, uh... the book probably greatly details in, and describes, but in this particular- in the game itself, I don't think it ever got a... a proper explanation for what they were mean. They just started saying it a lot, and you kind of had to infer. 
Ooh, do you smell that? Come, oik oik! Without even waiting for you, Boindil runs over the hill and disappears behind it. You follow him, and as you reach the brow, you see a very strange scene before you. Rushing ahead has never really been a good one to do. Never, never really paid out, uh, panned out well for us, I don't think. I told you, you shouldn't touch them! But I was hungry! I guess we're immediately fighting then. Okie dokie. So got Boindel here. Unfortunately, Boindel's gone, which is kind of a bummer. What do you have? We've never seen you yet. Uh, she's level 8. Uh, Balindus's auto attack has hit several enemies. That's cool. Hopefully, it only hits enemies and doesn't auto attack allies also. Because it says enemies, but you know. Friendly fire is a hell of a thing in this game. Puncture. Balindus stabs a single enemy with a handle of her axe and deals a lot of damage. Push. Balindus rams an enemy with her shield. He's knocked back, damages others in his path, and falls down. Where's that auto attack? There we go. I'm gonna give you this. If her auto attack hits multiple enemies, then triggering something that makes her auto attack uh, do more damage seems like it'd be rather effective. And that's my cap, right? Oh, it's not my cap? Right, I can have four characters. I need to add one more then. Maybe Giant Armor Man? He's level 7 now. These characters are lagging behind, probably because they were out of the party for so long. But he does still have like 5,000 5, hit points. He's got some nice, nasty attacks to do too. So he seems like a reasonable person to add in. Maybe give him the... The health regeneration item, since he's got a nice big chunk of health to recover. I think this is the way I want to go. We'll see how it pans out. Oh, they're all spread out. Okay. So, Darun. First, let's maybe push you forward. These characters are kind of spread out and not where they, I want them to be. But as far as the people that are already on the fray. Ah, uh, we can just immediately do an attack with you. Who's next? Kill. <laughs> That's a good chunk taken out. What do you need? Okay. Should be able to do a lot of damage like this. That is a lot of damage, you're right. Uh, I could do that a few times actually, huh? Just keep pushing her in there. There we go. That's effective. I think I like her. Spam those attacks. His recovery he gets from that attack is really useful. There we go. I'm just spamming these two characters. Oh, he's in rage mode, so no more control there. Okay, you're taking damage already. Well, you already you kind of already had damage at the beginning, too. Let's get you to go around behind. Okay, there's those two. I'm trying to make out their exact locations. Oh, right, there they are. I think I can get away with this without friendly fire. It's a rather expensive attack, isn't it? Okay, sure. Could do this. Bye. Ooh, yeah, that still does damage. I'd be yes? disinclined to do dangerous attacks right now. Was somebody shooting at us from over here? Ah, there's one of you. Okay. Hi. Of course. No more archering, please. Archer, no archer. There we go. Let's give bonus AP to these characters as possible. There we go. Just sort of slicing away right now. Wow, all this bonus AP certainly stacks up. Let's give you damage resistance because you have full attention of the people around you. Are you still fighting people? Let's just get you over here. Both of you, really. 
Keep doing that rapid attack. It just chops them down. Okay, we're out of AP. Where are you? I can't do that yet. That should work. Just trying not to actively friendly fire my teammates here. There we go. You're not ready yet. Please don't hit our teammates. I can't always tell if it's going to hit my teammates or not. We've had plenty of scary moments. Did I just say friendly fire? Who hit me? Hard to, hard to say. Little quick heal on myself. There's an aggro. That got some attention. Let's use it. That worked. Yes. What is it? What do you need? Right away. Try to close the gap for this. There we go. That more or less cleared him out. Everyone's okay. At this point, I'm inclined to just kind of hang out and heal. Then. So we're gonna go 25 undead. And 50 orcs. And we were almost done with the orcs, apparently. 43 done already, huh? Didn't, didn't seem like there were that many, to be honest. Okay. Frame rate seems low at the moment. That's not... In the prologue mission, that was more of a recording problem. But nowadays, this seems to be... Uh, that's just my... That's actually what's happening on my screen, too, now. Tung, so Tungdil must be... He must be rooted, I guess? Snare is not really established as a mechanic, so I don't think I've seen this visual before, but I assume that's what it means, because he's not moving. Uh, never seen it before, and there's no, uh, weirdly, there's no, like, special, there's no, like, status effect icon listed here. What do you need? Weird. There's, like, a weird lack of, uh, of, a uh, status effect listing on the, uh, next to the portraits and stuff. Yes? What is it? What is it? Let's see, you could close the gap here a bit. This'll throw him. This'll mess with him. Okay. Oink, oink, little piggies. This'll make a mess. Oh, he's in rage mode. No more control. So you guys just aren't... Just gonna hang out? Alright, I'll manually tell you to kill people that are ten feet away instead of standing perfectly still. Oh, so he friendly fires because of his cleave range. There's a weird quirk in this game where if somebody's standing right... Uh, when I'm deliberately t uh, trying to get people away from enemies, they won't stop attacking them. But then other times, uh, I'll be trying specifically... Let's, let's bring these two back around to take the two bridges since they're pretty narrow. Uh, when, I'm tr when I'm not trying to attack people, I can't stop attacking people. But when I, don't want to but when I do want people to attack people uh, automatically, they definitely don't. Okay, Jerun... Really? Their auto-pathing literally doesn't work. <laughs> They'll try to run in a straight line and then be like, I can't get past this, what do I do? Alright, now we're in the fray. You're doing poorly at the moment, Boindle. But I can I get a little bit of health back that way. But we're going to have to rely a little bit more on your help here. Trying to clear them off of our. There we go. Oh, take them out. Take them out while they're down. Good. Gotta clear them out before they create a problem for our dying character here. There we go. Let's just leave him behind for. Oh, uh, no. He's healing enough. I'll bring him in. There's only six enemies left, actually. Alright. Yes? What is it? Yes? Are you fighting anyone right now? I assume you are, right? Okay. Go for that hit. You can make a mess with that. And go for him. Already got you. I should reach him, I think. I don't think it will, actually. Let's see. Let's do the R ability. You can't really quite... There we go. Go back this way. Ooh, off he goes. All right. This will clear him out fast. There we go. Got him. The chaotic battle between the orcs, the undead, and you comes to the best possible conclusion. No one else is standing but you. You decide to have a little look around. 
Were the orcs and undead supposed to be fighting each other? They seemed to be united against me in that, I thought. I don't know, I didn't... Seemed like they were both fighting me at the same time, but I could be wrong. The closer you get to the murky pool, the worse it stinks of decay and death. At first, you thought it was only dirty water, but for as much as you can make out through the gloom, it seems almost black and has wondrous streaks. Wondrous is an alarming word to use for that. It's a map of the surroundings. Not far from your current position is a place clearly marked with a red cross. Is it another orc camp, or even the Alfar camp? You mark the place on your own map. It's a nice touch that everyone's here. Oh, you can see all the party members that we've been on this adventure with. Weird how none of them helped me a moment ago, though. Without an in-universe in explanation for why most of my party just stands back during grand battles, it really just makes them all seem like assholes that are just not helpful. Is that, I don't think that's the intention. You discover a file that looks like the one Geralda carries with her. Before you can get a proper look at it, Geralda is suddenly standing next to you, and she wrenches it out of your hand. She turns it back and forth excitedly, but then disappointment spreads across her face. The container is empty. Without a word, she goes back to examining the surroundings. Oh, she thought she was going to get her fix. Not so much. Has anyone left it here at all? It doesn't seem like it. You tremble at the thought that you could end up the same way. You hope that one of your companions would have sympathy with you if you were to die in the perished land. I believe that means the, uh... I assume he means to finish them off, of course. Like, I wonder if the usual blow to the head logic applies here. Where you can just wipe people out by damaging the brain. That's often how zombie stuff goes, but with fantasy stuff you never know. After all, the uh, the original voodoo zombie premise had almost no overlap with the uh, concept that's used in popular fiction now. Can I just keep going over here? Uh, is there anything over here? At all? Can't click o Oh, nope, found the boundaries of where I'm allowed to click. Okay. For some reason they let you go down here, but the uh, there's nothing interactive. Might be just a forgotten detail. May have had different intentions for the map at one point, or something like that. Well, I guess we'll just head on out. We have a map with a clear destination of where we should try to go next. With the probable location of another camp up your sleeve, you continue on your way. Hey, Goimgar hits level 10. There was a weird lack of sound effects on a level up screen. So he's level 10. A few other people I think leveled up too. So yeah. Are they done being level 7? Yeah, they're both level 8 now. Cool. So no one's level 7 anymore. The, f the floor of experience is rising. Very soon the entire party will be maxed out. If we can... If there's enough game left. Uh, there appears to be... Okay, so he got... He must have gotten shield bash? There's nothing else here. Gormgar raises his shield into his enemy's face, then enemies knock down. I've never really used him in combat. He does he doesn't really feel like a proper party member. So it wasn't really in a hurry. I keep thinking he's gonna die or betray us sooner or later, and he keeps not doing that fast enough. Magic shield that reduces the damage on the target significantly for a short amount of time versus chain healing. <gasps> what? Heavily heals an ally with a 50% chance of leaping to the next ally. How much is heavily? Hard to say, but having an actual healer finally would be nice. That's the first healing ability I've had access to. I'm, we I'm weirded out by the fact that uh, one of those options was in the middle and the other one was to the right instead of being left and right. It makes me worry because sometimes I level up and there's just a skill in the middle and I don't know what to do about that. Because I'm like, it, I was like, I always think like, is that my only option, period? Or is it glitching? And the fact that I just saw one where there was a skill in the middle and the right instead of left and right made me think that it was glitching. It makes me double, it makes me reassess the idea that maybe all those other times that I'd never got an option, it might have been glitched. 
Because it really seems like I'm supposed to get an option every time a character levels up and gets a new skill, but almost more often than not, I haven't had an option. It's just already there, and I'm like, uh... Is am I supposed to... Is that... I, I don't know what to make of that sometimes. Oh well. Game's almost over, so I guess it doesn't make that big of a deal. Mighty March. This character looks ridiculous. It's kind of amazing. Uh, Mighty March. Jerun fights a path through his enemies and causes a lot of damage to everyone on his way. Or decay. Enemies in his vicinity receive lots of damage, then they panic. Huh. I like... I like AoE damage. I like hurting lots of enemies. The problem is... The game doesn't have a signifier that I can look at at a screen like this, for example. That will in great detail explain which skills have friendly fire and which ones don't. So when it just uses the vague terminology of enemies in his vicinity, with in air quotes, uh, so how big is the area of effect? Does it affect enemies? Does it affect allies? We don't know until I test it the hard way and then I maybe end up with a skill that I don't want to use and stuff like that. Meanwhile, Mighty March I can totally see myself using. Like, what if I got to that bridge we got to in the last level? I would just be like, oh, yeah, walk in a straight line down that bridge and murder everything. That's something That's something I can direct in a direction, at least, whereas the AoE seems like it might be damaging to my allies in a way that I can't predict until after I test it. We got some supplies, got another figurine. Sure. I believe, so that must be the encampment way, to, encampment way down there. I guess we'll loop around. It's shaped in a really unfortunate way where I'd have to go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to loop around after get, getting to that. Huh. That's half my supplies right there. It's weird that there's no connecting tissue there. It's just a forest. Why would it be e You know, wait, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having... I'm forcing myself to look at the actual plotting of the paths that are in this game now. They don't seem to have any logic to them. At all, really, actually. This is just an open plain. Uh, not an open plain, it's a forest, but we go through forests all the time, so why can't I walk straight through this forest? Why do I have to go around the forest? Especially when going around the forest involves going down a cliff and then back up the cliff? These plotted dots don't seem to reflect the map very well. It's especially strange how the dots often are not on... Look at this, like there's all these... These are roads. There's roads everywhere and cities everywhere. Why aren't the dots on the cities, or let's call them towns or villages, whatever. Why aren't the dots on the towns and why don't the lines follow the roads? They're not even approximate in many cases. This, they're just a wherever they... Like, there's, there's these... Most of these towns just don't have dots anywhere around them. Which is a little odd because I think at the beginning of the game, I think... I think the dots used to be on towns and the roads used to more or less follow the... the, the dotted lines and then of course there were some extra dotted lines to give you shortcuts, which is fine. It's not unreasonable people to walk off roads, but not having... Being unable to walk in a straight line through a forest, but instead walking a straight line across the forest there, but then like going under cliffs and everything and crossing rivers? but not following any of the roads, like these lines... This one goes over a mountain. <laughs> we can go over this mountain, but not through that forest in a straight line? Like, the, nothing nothing about this uh, network of dots and lines it feels like it was particularly thought out. It seems just nonsensical right now to me. It almost looks offset, like everything's supposed to be a little more to the right. If you took this entire series here and moved them slightly down into the right, a lot of these dots would, would fall on top of the towns. And maybe not necessarily the road. Oh no! The, 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 yeah, this this line looks like it's supposed to be this road connecting, and this these dots look like they're supposed to be these towns, but they're like in the wrong spot. It looks like yeah, it looks like the entire map is somehow to the left of where it's supposed to be on the screen. Like the entire thing glitched out. That's not crazy necessarily. I might explain why this is not on either of the two more path-looking areas up there. But yeah, like, this... Definitely the entire map just does not look like... It doesn't look right at all. Oh well. Role-playing! Suspension of disbelief! Stop thinking!